Hello, Steve. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so let's see. Can you please provide a brief introduction, including your name and professional background, as well as highlight your collaboration with KYC over the years? Hi, I'm Steve Haggett from Haggett Consulting, and I'm a state and federal dive contractor. Been in business since 1983 doing C4 surveys, and it's about 40 years. I started collaborating with QYC uh, in 2022 uh, when I purchased a W6. And I was so impressed with that unit that I ended up buying more. And so we're all going on three years of collaboration now. Um, and I've taken my 45 years of diving experience and um, giving it to them to help us manufacture better products. Um, and be more useful to the industries that are out there. What challenges did you see in traditional underwater inspection methods? And what critical new approaches do you believe were necessary? Okay, so in 2000, um, we were limited on how deep we could dive down to 60 feet by the regulations. Um, what I do for a living is we inspect the C4 for seafood waste and for bark debris. Um, so we were limited by the regulations to only a dive of 60 feet. Um, that advanced from 2000 um, right up till we got about to 2016. And then at that point, um, it had already gotten to 140 feet. So it was getting pretty risky for us to go down and do our jobs. <clears throat> because at that depth, you only have 140 feet, six minutes tops, and then you're into decompression. And it takes a lot longer than that to walk a transect and take photographs. So... It was getting very dangerous for the divers. Um, after that, things got better. Um, when portable ROVs came onto the market and QIC brought some of the really good technical ones out, by 2022, they were good enough that I wanted to try them out and see if they could do the job for us. The state started to recognize that these ROVs can do the job, so they went ahead and extended the depth limits and let us go as deep as the ROVs could go to chase the waste down and map out the debris. So it changed a lot. We were hard hat divers with um, a compressor on a boat and an umbilical going down to the diver. And it took two people to run that job at, at a minimum. You really need three. So you've got a captain on the boat, you'll have a tender on the boat, and then you'll have a diver on the seafloor who's walking the bottom and taking photographs every 15 feet. And we did it that way for 20 years until the RV started to come out and we're able to be good enough to take a job over for us. Steve, we'd like to know how the QYMT system's unique benefits and advantages have improved your professional work and inspection tasks. When we do a survey underwater, what we're looking at is a quadrat, which is a one meter square. And what we're looking for in that quadrat is the percent of cover by debris, whether that's bark debris or seafood waste, either one. Um, so we're, we're measuring this one square meter spot, spot off. We take a photograph of that, and then we send that up to the boat, and we'll call it up and tell the guy on the boat, the tender, the diver on bottom will call up and say that's 20% cover, and then the tender on the boat will write that down. And you'll proceed like that all day long until you get all the sample points done. There can be up to a 1,000 sample points on a job. So it's a pretty laborious process that we're going through. QYMT has changed everything about how we do our job now. That process is automated at this point. So the ROV will swim up right to the sample point and photograph it, and then immediately can assess the percent of cover in that spot. So when it comes up to us, we have all the work done. Not only do we have the photograph, the actual sample point, but we have the assessment complete at the same time and it spits out the percent of cover. So it's automated all the way through. So the ROV never stops. It just keeps going, shooting in HD. It's good enough quality that it's able to make those assessments for us. And it's doing it on the fly now instead of that labor process of three men being involved for every single sample point. And then the process of that, you can lose things when you're calling it up up the comm box and the tender's trying to write it down. Every one of those steps there is a danger to the data. It can become corrupt, but uh, the ROV has changed all that. It's a 4K thing, it doesn't stop. So it's time and date stamped and that's really good evidence for us that this is precisely what we saw on that transect. So that's changed quite a bit about how we go about doing our job. The 
after part of the job is writing a, a very extensive report, which included a picture of every single sample point. And now the ROV has made that so easy, especially with QYMT doing all the analysis in advance for us. Um, the report practically writes itself. Um, so it's changed quite a bit. I'd say the reporting time has been cut in half by this. So we've got a safety advantage of not sending men into the water anymore. And we have the fact that the reporting is cut in half at this point. QYMT has given us the ability in our structural surveys to assess fracture critical components. We can actually measure them live during the survey itself. Um, we can measure gaps, fractures, cracks. We can decide right then and there if the survey needs to be extended, if it needs to be deeper, if we need to go farther, if the investigation needs to add more transects. And all that is the result of being able to make determinations on the fly during the job itself. Before we had to do a dive, come back, look at all the data, and then make a decision, and then go back and dive again. Now we, we can cut all that out. We just continue to add transects until we've mapped out the entire area, because now we know what the actual data is while we're diving. How has the QYMT system streamlined or expedited operation with just a few clicks? So the process we had with sample points that I discussed a little earlier was that we'd have to photograph that one. And then after we photographed it, that photograph gets sent up to the boat. And then in post-processing after the dive, we have to analyze each photograph. So we bring that one up and we'll decide what the percent of coverage is on that photograph. And at that point, we have to write it down. Then we have to save the file. So the fastest you can do all of this is 30 seconds to get the picture, put the date and time on it, and then put the sample point percent of cover on it. That's as quick as I can go. And I've been doing it 20 years. It's 30 seconds. So when I have to do a thousand sample points on a 20 acre site, we're talking eight hours of time right there just to process those images like that. That doesn't exist anymore because QYMT doing the analysis in advance it's done when I pull it off the ROV. I have all the data done. It's in the laptop and we're filed and ready to put on the report. So it saved a tremendous amount of time and made us so much more efficient. And to do it now, instead of going through that whole process of calling it up and, and having a tender write it all down and then taking the film out of the camera and processing that and then studying the actual print itself to come up with a percent of cover, now it's down to four clicks. As I roll through the sample transect, um, all I do is snap on the picture, and then that gives me a print of the picture. And then there's two laser points on that picture, so that's one more click for each laser. I just hit both of those, and then the third click is my measurement, and I've saved it. Mm -hmm. And that's all it takes. It's just click, 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 and I'm done. But that's one sample point. It takes seconds now to process a sample point instead of hours. So it saves so much time in the diving itself and in the afterwards, the reporting of it, which was so laborious before. But the diver now isn't on the bottom. He doesn't have to stop at each sample point and steady himself to photograph it. So we don't have silt rolling over the top of him. So the quality of the pictures we're getting is better because the ROE works in a continuous fashion. It just keeps rolling at one and a half knots, taking 4K quality film, which enables the two lasers to come out perfect and the whole thing just works just charming together. It's a great system. Could you please provide more details on how you described the Firefish and QYM2 system serving as tools that represent a quantum leap in capability compared with traditional tools? I'm of the age where when I started diving and doing this, it was all pad and pen. We I called it up to the tender and he physically took a pen and wrote down the percent to cover for every single sample point. So I gave him sample point number, the percent of cover, the water temperature, the water depth, and I take the picture and then I'm moving on to the next one. And he's writing all that down in a big table that we printed out. And then I take that soggy, wet piece of paper at the end of the day and that goes on my desk. And then I take that and transfer that to each individual picture as the percent of cover. So all that labor is gone. Oh. And this does feel a lot like going from a pad and a pen to a quantum computer. Mm -hmm. What 
the V6 and the W6 have to offer in the way of AI software, not just with QYMT, but there's measurement software built in the device itself. And the ability to travel a transect and have an ROV that's smart enough to stay two feet off the bottom that will fix its own speed and control everything about the ride. So I can just focus on taking pictures and photographing the bottom. Um, and it's basically driving itself. All I do is push a stick to make it go forward. With the technology we have today combined in this and GPS, I have pinpoint accuracy on everywhere I've been. So we're sub meter and that's, that's great news for everybody. It's more accurate reporting and that's fair to both industry and the regulators. Steve, thank you for taking the time to speak with us. And all the best with the upcoming missions. Have a good and day. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good night. Okay. Bye. See you.